Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept our humble oh, humble obeisances all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I hold my obeisances to all the devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Ram Prabhu. Shama Gauri. Atar, but that was nice reading. Thank you. Yeah. And he was doing Kirtan for some time. Yeah, I sang the, the bhajan Jai Radhe Jai Krishna. Which bhajan was that? Uh, Jai Radhe Jai Krishna Jai Vrindavan. Achha. All glories to Rasa Dance, the most beautiful of Krishna's pastimes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Maharaj, Thank you. Can, you can start now. Today, uh, there was a request to speak about Srinivasa Charja. Is that the? Is that correct? Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, um Nila Chala Nivesaya Nityaya Paramatmane Bhavadra Subhadra Vya Jagannathaya Te Namaharaj Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani Ki Jai. Okay, so I'm looking at myself. It's not a really good image for me to look at. <laughs> Can you shut me off? <laughs> Or switch where I don't have to see. Yeah, that's better. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so yeah. So Srinivasacharya. <clears throat> yeah, we sing that beautiful song. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Doya Kodamole. And then the very last line of that song, it says, you know, if I can find the actual reading. Doya Koda Sri Acharya Prabhu Srinivas Ramachandra Sangha Mage Narottam Das. So Narottam Srinivas Acharya were very, very intimate associates. In fact, it is believed, and I believe uh, this is absolutely correct, when Srinivas Acharya left the planet, Narottam wrote that song, Yeya Nila Premadana Karuna Prachur, which is in separation of the Vaishnavas, uh, deep separation from the Vaishnavas. Um, Srinivas Acharya, um, his, uh, as far as I can remember, the, the pastime goes back to his father, Gangadas Gangadara Bhattacharya, who uh, was born in a Brahmin family. And uh, at one point he was living in Jajigram. And Jajigram was a place where his maternal relatives were living, his uh, wife's parents, and they had taken up residence there. Um, there was some word going out that uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, or this very beautiful sannyasi, was in Katwag and was receiving uh, sannyasa initiation from Keshava Bharati. So on that understanding, he left and went to uh, Katwag to watch the uh, ceremony. When he saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he became mesmerized by his beauty and by his transcendental effulgence. And so much that he became absorbed in chanting after he heard the name given by uh, Keshava Bharti, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Uh, he, ca he kept saying it over and over, Chaitanya, Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Chaitanya, Chaitanya. In fact, he became mad just chanting the names of Chaitanya. When he went home, that continued. And at one point, the people who knew him and others, they gave him the name Chaitanya Das. 
So now he was no longer as uh, known as Ganga, Ganga Das, Bab, Ganga Dara, but Chaitanya Das. Him and his wife had agreed not to build a family. But then one night, they both went to sleep. And in a dream, Mahaprabhu appeared to both of them and said, uh, please have a son. And that son will be a great devotee. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually inspired the birth of Srinivas Acharya. So they both woke up and compared their dreams and they, they had to practically the exact same dream at that point. And soon after that, a beautiful child was born. And, uh, and he grew up really fast. He, in his young age, he had a great desire to visit holy places and learn scripture. In fact, at one point, he had heard after traveling in certain places that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of course, everyone knew Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at that time as a great, powerful, and the effulgent sannyasi. Others knew him and didn't really know, but understood that he could be the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hearing the glories and activities of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Srinivas Acharya wanted to meet him. But then, around the same time, he had heard that, that Lord Chaitanya will soon depart from the planet. So he made his trek to go to Jagannath Puri, where Mahaprabhu had been staying. But on the way, uh, he learned that uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had left the planet. And so he fainted in ecstasy, in separation not getting the chance to meet Lord Chaitanya. He continued on to Puri, and everyone told him that you can learn more about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his life from Gadadhar Pandit. So he took shelter of Gadadhar Pandit. At that time, Gadadhar Pandit was also feeling intense separation from, from the departure of Lord Chaitanya. And he, it appeared that Gadadhar Pandit was aging one day, one year every day. Although he was the same age as Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya had disappeared at the age of 48 years old. And Gadadhar was only about one or two months younger than Lord Chaitanya. His body started to become very old in separation from Lord Chaitanya. Srinivasa Tarcharya had a strong desire to learn Srimad Bhagavatam, and he thought there's no better person to teach than Gadadhar Pandit, because Gadadhar Pandit used to every day read Srimad Bhagavatam. And many times he would read to Lord Chaitanya. And his reading was so beautifully expressed in such a sweet and devotional voice that uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would be absorbed in listening. And two of his favorite pastimes were the pastimes of Prahlad Maharaj and the pastimes of Juga Maharaj, the two five-year-old boys who are great, great, great devotees. So when he would narrate in the Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would listen to the pastimes over and over again and continue to encourage him to read the same pastimes over. So much so that Vrindavan Das Thakur describes that these pastimes that he narrated, he repeated the same one sometimes up to a hundred times. In one day, just the Lord Chaitanya would be absorbed listening. So Srinivasatari wanted to learn Srimad Bhagavatam. So he began teaching him. But, Srini, but, Acharya, but Gadadhar Pandya was in the ecstasy of separation. So his emotional state was not very, what we say, able to hide. And many times he would express uh, tears of ecstasy and separation from Lord Chaitanya. But when he was teaching uh, Srinivas, he managed to control himself, wanting to give this great person who he understood was the future of the movement. 
And so when he went to read his Bhagavatam, he noticed that a lot of the pages, the ink had been smeared, it was no longer readable, because when he used to read Bhagavatam, he would cry. And therefore he couldn't even teach because the Bhagavatam was practically illegible. So in that illegibility, he said to Srinivas, you go back to the scribes in Navadweep and recopy my Bhagavatam and bring it back to me. And when you do, I will teach you. So he gave him the Bhagavatam, he went on his way. But it took some time, and when he was, as he was returning, just before he returned, the word was out that Gadadhar Pandit had also left the planet. So now he was even more unhappy to hear this great person, Gadadhar Pandit, had now disappeared. So his separation became stronger. Others told him, now you should go to uh, Vrindavan and meet Sanatan Rupan Goswami. So he decided to make his trip to Vrindavan. First, he went back to Jajigram and asked his missing mother for permission. His mother was a great devotee, and she could understand his enthusiasm to learn and to associate with great souls. So she gave permission, and he left. And on his way, when he stopped in one householder's house on the way to Vrindavan, the word came that Rupa and Sanatha Goswami had just disappeared. Again, he fainted in, in unhappiness. After reviving himself, he continued on his way back to, 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 back to, the, to, the, to Vrindavan. And on his way to Vrindavan, he finally came. And uh, of course, he had, during that time he appeared, there was a ceremony and separation and glorification of Rupa and Sanatha Goswami. He fainted again. And this time when he woke up, Jiva Goswami was there. And Jiva Goswami understood that this is a great soul. So he took shelter of Jiva Goswami and Jiva Goswami agreed to teach him um, the science of bhakti, especially Srimad Bhagavatam. And so he, he took tulajit tulajis, tulajis, under the care of Jiva Goswami. But Jiva Goswami had a very strong desire to have all the books of the Goswamis, which were in one copy only, in their original forms, uh, copied, and so they could distribute books. You will read and you can see there are letters. Uh, these are old letters that you can uh, read. They're in the back of one book by, by uh, Nityananda Das, of the letters that Jiva Goswami used to write to uh, Srinivas Achari and to others, Govinda and a few others, when they were distributing books. And in those letters, they have, there's an account of how many books that he actually distributed. It's interesting. The first book distribution within our, what we say, culture, that at least we know of, was inspired by Srila Jiva Goswami. And so after teaching him, there were two other great souls who also came to Vrindavan. So they made a party, and that was Naratam Das Thakur, Srinivas Acharya, and uh, Shamananda Pandit. Jiva Goswami had given them the mission to take the books from Vrindavan to Navadweep to have them copied by the scribes there. But it was a dangerous trip, and there were many Dakwites on the way. So he arranged that 11 guards would go along with them on the trip to protect the devotees and to protect the books. So the books were packed into this huge box and sealed very tightly and placed on this bullock cart and pulled by this one bullock. And then they were on their way. Most of the trip, they didn't read and reach any resistance. Then they came to one area of Bengal where there was one, um, King, and this era, this was a place called Bana, Bana Bishnupur, and there was one king called Birham Bir. Birham Bir was a king, but he was also a leader of a gang of Dakwites. So he would consult astrologers, at least one particular astrologer, 
where yeah, the astrologers would tell him if there was any travelers coming through his kingdom and then he would arrange for them to be plundered and taken all their wealth. So after consulting his astrologer, the astrologer reported that yes, there's an entourage coming and they have this great treasure. This is my indication. And so Birhan Bir, he gave instructions to his dacoits to go and steal that treasure. But this time he gave a different, he added one. He said, try not to harm anyone in this activity. Before he never said that. So this time when the dacoits came, it must have been arranged by Providence, or you might say by Yoga Maya, that all the devotees, including the guards, that particular night when the dacoits came, they all fell asleep. And so it was easy. The dacoits just went and took the whole box along with the bullock cart and left without any resistance, without anybody knowing. And so the books were stolen that night. The next day, uh, the devotees woke up and everybody said, what happened? The card is gone. The books are gone. And all the guards realized none of them stayed awake. So they all were condemning themselves. So Srinivasacharya and Narutam Das Thakur and Shamananda Pandit were wondering, what are we going to do now? This is the greatest tragedy. So they were thinking, there's no other alternative. Well, we should go to the Ganga and end our lives. Then they heard a voice coming from the sky. In fact, the only person who heard the voice was Srinivasacharya. And the voice said, the king has taken the books. Be patient. So Srinivasacharya understood that this is where the books were. The king of the area had taken him. And so he told Naratam Das Thakur, you go to Ketri Gram and you preach there. And uh, Shamananda, you go to Arissa and you preach there. And I will meet you, I will join you all later. Right now I will stay and find the books. And so they all left and then, Tri then Trinivasacharya came to the place where the king was. Now the king, although he was a Dakwa, he he used to like to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. That was one of his uh, qualities. He would have a group of court pundits who would daily recite uh, the verses and discuss them, and he would listen. So one day, Srinivasacharya showed up for this discussion, and he sat amongst the group. When uh, the pundits were uh, speaking, the interpretations and the, the verses, Srinivas was noticeably, uh, visibly disturbed. And the pundits also, one pundit, the leading pundit, he noticed, he said, oh, you don't like our, or you disagree with our interpretation, let's hear yours. And so he got up and started to speak and everyone listened, especially the king. And with, with, with such erudition and great, great depth of understanding, he explained the verses in the Bhagavatam. The king was so pleased that he said, you should stay here and become my leading court pundit. And so he was given that uh, position. After the some time being there for a while, the king asked him, is there anything I can do for you? He said, yes, actually, I... Uh, I lost something. The king said, what was that? He said, well, I had a big box of books and it was stolen. And now I'm concerned where the books are. The king said, well, actually, I have the books. He led him over and there, was, there it was, the whole box of books. The king, at first, when he opened the box and he saw it was books, he started to chastise his astrologer. He said, you said, well, you said these were jewels. He said, my readings in the astro astrological chart kept coming up the same. I read many times and it said there is a great treasure. Of course, we understand from the spiritual perspective that these, these books were the greatest of all treasures. There was Chaitanya Charitamrita by Krishnadas Kaviraj, 
There was Ujwala Nila Mani by Srila Rupa Goswami, many of the works of the Goswamis. And it was interesting to note that when the books were packed, the Chaitanya Charita Mrita was placed on the bottom and the rest of the books on top. But when they opened, when Srinivas saw the books, he noticed Chaitanya Charita Mrita was sitting on the top. So it is also mentioned by the, by the great souls who understand this particular pastime, that this is the cream of all Vedic literature. When you let milk sit, naturally the cream rises to the top. And so the, the to topmost of all Vedic scriptures is the glorification of the life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu along with his precepts given by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, which Srila Prabhupada so um, expertly presented to us by giving his Bhakti Vedanta purports, which is a tre treasure house of nectar opening up to this, uh, this life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the teachings. So then uh, Srinivasacharya became very close to the king and the king actually took initiation for him. And this king had a lot of influence in his kingdom. And so being somewhat of a, uh, he was kind of a heavy guy, you might use the word heavy. <laughs> So he made it mandatory that everybody in his kingdom become Vaishnavas. <laughs> we, need, we need a few leaders like that nowadays. <laughs> he, you, you didn't have a choice. Either you become Vaishnavas or you get punished by the king. So everyone became Vaishnavas. And uh, of course, many of them willingly did it. And that kingdom was, was for many, many Decades, centuries, maybe even centuries, we don't even know. It was a, simply everyone there was Vaishnavas. So Srinivasa Dacharya developed a relationship with the king and the king became his disciple. So much so that Srinivas would go and go out preaching and visit different places and come back. And the king was like overwhelmed with separation every time Srinivas left and when he would come back he was in ecstasy of happiness. The king developed such love for Srinivas that when Srinivas would leave he couldn't bear his separation. So uh, this is a little bit about the life of Srinivas Acharya. He, uh, um, he had two wives. The second wife was inspired by uh, the great uh, son of Lord Nityananda, Virachandra Bhadra, or Bhadra, Virbhadra Chandra, who was an incarnation of uh, Shirodakshai Vishnu, who appeared in this world. So he had uh, two wives. There was a dream where uh, Shridivasacharya was told in the dream that this is girl, who has a who is a who is from a Brahminical family? Her father is looking for a wife for him. Um, I can give you more information on that. The, um, it was Gopal Chakravarti. Uh, was the daughter of Gopal Chakravarti from Jajigram, and so he accepted. It was also from the same place like that where he was from. So Narutam Das Thakur and Srinivas Acharya developed such close intimate associates. Srinivas Acharya joined Narutam Das Thakur from, from the famous uh, Ketri Gram festival, which we narrated a couple of weeks ago on the appearance of uh, Narutam Das Thakur. And so they became really good close friends and during that festival, Srinivasacharya was also playing a very important role. Uh, during that festival, six deities, I can mention the deities in particular. Let's mention here these deities that were installed by the Naratam and Srinivas Thakur, and they worshipped. Um, the deities were, um, it was the deity of Gauranga, the deity of Vallabhi Kanta, Raj Mohan, Sri Krishna, Sri Krishna, Didi, 
the deity, deities of Radha Kanta and Radha Raman. And Srinivasacharya performed the, the, the installation ceremony and did the first puja also. Mm -hmm. um, one time, uh, this personality who we know as uh, Ramachandra Kaviraj, um, Srinivasacharya and a few of his associates were just happening to standing on the roadside talking. And this marriage procession came. And uh, the person being who was married was Ramachandra. And so, you know, everyone knows Indian wedding processions. And the, the, the bride, the, the groom is decorated up really nicely, riding on a horse usually, at least nowadays, that's what they do. Um, and so there was a grand procession. And he was about to uh, get married. Srinivasacharya made some comment. And although he was a Grihastha, he also said something negative about household life, that he was about to drown in the deep well of material life. That, heard, that comment was heard by Ram Chandra. When he heard that, it just struck his mind. And he woke him up from his particular uh, euphoria about marriage. And now he came over to this person who he heard from and fell at his feet. And he said, who are you? Your words just went deep into my heart and I can't forget them. And then uh, he took shelter of Srinivas and became his disciple. Later on, Ramachandra Kaviraj, he was named later Kaviraj because he, he was a great poet and wrote many beautiful poetry, you know, expressions of poetic devotional songs, at least poetry. And uh, he, let me see if I can remember. Yes, uh, Srinivasacharya and his association with Naratan uh, then invited um, Ramachandra to be a part of their association. And, and then Ramachandra developed a really a strong attachment to Naratam Das Thakur. And Naratam Das Thakur developed a strong attachment to Ramachandra Kaviraj. And they became the best of friends. And so uh, this is interesting. Although he was a disciple, of Srinivas, uh, he gave his disciple to Naratam. Sometimes we see that even in our Krishna consciousness movement. I know of a few examples. I won't mention any names, but um, I know one great devotee. He, he gave his disciple to another great devotee in the movement and said, you know, she can work under you you take care of her and you engage her in different services. Of course, she remained um, the disciple of her original spiritual master, but she took shelter of this other senior devotee and became very dedicated to him in service and did amazing service. Uh, so sometimes it's like that, uh, a disciple of one spiritual master will be given by, the, by his spiritual master to work and, and serve another spiritual master. And this is just the, uh, the deep friendship that exists between Vaishnavas. And they don't become possessive of their disciples. That they use, sometimes send their disciples to serve others who are very dear to them and have important missions in spreading Krishna consciousness. So this was the case like that. So uh, today is the disappearance day of Srinivasacharya. It says that he is Srinivasacharya is an Avesh incarnation of Mahaprabhu. Um, Avesh means that uh, he is empowered by Mahaprabhu 
to speak the pure, the glories of pure devotional service. Anyone who sees or associates with Srinivas Acharya, it's like associating with and with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu directly. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spread his movement in three ways. One, through his personal associates, association. Two, by this avesh. Avesh is that he empowered uh, certain personalities to become his pure representatives. And those who heard from them, associated with them, or even, uh, uh, yeah, who served them, actually were getting the special direct association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, non-different. So that was Srinivas Acharya. He wrote one beautiful song, which we sing occasionally, uh, the Six Sad Goswami Astakam, the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful prayers and glorification of the Six Goswamis in Sri Vrindavan Dham. When we hear uh, Srila Prabhupada sing this bhajan, there was one, uh, there's one story, I'll tell the story. There was one, this was in India, and one of our devotees, he had a, he had a little stand of different items for selling, along with some books, and he was minding the stand. And then he was playing this uh, bhajan on his recorder of Srila Prabhupada singing the, uh, the Six Goswami Astakam. One famous singer came and he heard Srila Prabhupada singing. And then he stood there with his eyes closed and he was just moving his head from side to side, just absorbed. Now the devotee who was running the stand thought that this person was just getting close so he could steal something from the stand. <laughs> so he was becoming suspicious. And his suspicion was starting to become a little overt. So he was going to tell this person to go away. But there was another devotee there who knew who that person was. He said, no, no, don't do it. He's actually a great singer. He's a, he's a popular Bollywood singer. And so when the song was over, he opened his eyes. He said, I have never heard anything so beautiful. This is coming directly from the spiritual world. When Prabhupada was singing the Sadgo Swami Astakam. And I think we can all have a similar experience when we hear Srila Prabhupada sing that song with such depth of devotion, such attachment of uh, happiness to express his glorification to the Six Goswami. So that was a beautiful, beautiful song penned by uh, Srinivas Acharya which is one of, just, I'll just throw this in, it's one of my favorite bhajans. <laughs> Practically is my favorite bhajan. Okay, so these are some of the few of the unlimited glories of Srinivas Acharya, who is a Avesh incarnation of Mahaprabhu. In other words, Mahaprabhu actually orchestrated his appearance in the world by inspiring his parents to have a child. And the Lord wanted this person to appear so he could spread, spread the glories of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had left the planet. So I will open it up to anyone who would like to speak something in relationship to 
Srinivas Acharya or something related? My humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Your Holiness. Thank you for a wonderful lecture on Srinivas Acharya. May I know who is Srinivas Acharya in Krishna Leela? It doesn't mention. It doesn't seem he appeared in Krishna Leela. It was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who inspired his appearance in, Gaur, in, that, in this particular Leela. Nowhere in any of the writings that I know of has him been mentioned. Because uh, there is the Gora Gonadesh de Pika, and Gora Gonadesh de Pika is the Who's Who book, where you can find who who appeared in uh, Gora Lila, who they were in Krishna Lila. But there's nothing mentioned in my account here. And I'm sure the person who I'm reading from about this account would have indicated that, but there was just no indication in this writing or in any other previous writings. There's a beautiful book called Three Beyond Duality, which is a combination of the lives of Srinivas Acharya Narottam Das Thakur and Shamananda Goswami. And that is a nice book. So we don't, I don't have any, I, you can, if you can find Gauradesh, Gaura Gonadesh Pika, you can search through there and see if there's an indication. But from my knowledge, it appears that he, we know him only through Gaur Lila. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. He was born in 1530, and Lord Chaitanya left in 1534. So he wasn't... Hmm. It just seems to contradict that he was looking for Lord Chaitanya. But the mentions that, yeah, Hmm. This is a little bit of a dichotomy in dates here. Anyway. Any other comments or questions on Srinivasacharya? Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for the wonderful class. Um, Maharaj, I just had one question. Uh, so you had mentioned that he grew up very quickly. I mean, uh, so uh, is that why he was able to go search for Gadadhar Pandit while he's just four or five years old? Well, it, just, it seems to be a little bit of a dichotomy in his birth, you know, because we do hear that he heard about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's this says here he was born in 1530, and we know Lord Chaitanya left in 1534. So there might be some mistake that he was actually there well as an older person and during, during the early part of his life when Lord Chaitanya was there. So his birth date may also be incorrect at least according to what the readings I have here. So it seems to be a little bit of a, a dichotomy here. Yeah, because there are many stories that he went and, and, 
and uh, to associate with Gadadhar Pandit and learn from him. But how was that possible? It says that he was actually a young man when he went to see Gadadhar Pandit. So I think um, what I have here for his birthday is wrong. 1530 seems to be wrong. Uh, Wikipedia is definitely not a great source, but over there it says that it is uh, 1517. 1517? Yeah, May 1517. That's better. Yeah, I think, yeah, it makes sense with all the different pastimes as they played themselves out. That means he would have, would be at least, you know, uh, 17, 20. He would be a young man anyway, at least. Mm -hmm. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for a wonderful class, Maharaj. Thank you for clarifying the date. Yeah, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Hare Maharaj. Krishna. Uh, what are the books uh, he has written? Srinivas Acharya? Yeah. Hmm. It don't, doesn't mention any books that he wrote. Okay. He wrote that song that we know of. It says that he was the incarnation to spread, or he was the Avesh manifestation of Lord Chaitanya, to spread the glories of Lord Chaitanya by his personal appearance. In other words, anyone who met him would become devotees just, just by meeting him. He was he was he was like Lord Chaitanya in person, and it mentions that Lord Chaitanya mentioned to some devotees ahead of time that this person who will appear will distribute the books. So he, he his mission was to distribute the books of the Goswami, such as Jiva Goswami. And, Rupa Goswami and many of the other writers of Vaishnav literature at the time. So why don't we don't know of any work that he has actually written? At least I don't anyway. And nothing is mentioned in my account here. Also. He converted that king and converted the whole and that king, you know converted all the activities, all the members of his kingdom to, to become devotees of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. It says here, he used to teach the Goswami books to his disciples in Jajigram. He was more like a manifestation of distribution of whatever was already there. He didn't, we don't know him for being any author. And sometimes that's a particular empowerment that the Lord wanted him to. He traveled extensively and everyone who met him surrendered to Lord Chaitanya. He was just, his persona would bring about the attraction to Lord Chaitanya's teachings. And when he spoke, he always spoke in glorification of Lord Chaitanya and the writings of the six Goswamis and others like that. I think he, he took initiation from Gopal Bhatta Goswami. I think that's mentioned also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so Sunday is the actual disappearance day, along with Gadadhar Das and another great soul named Dhananjaya Pandit, like that. 
So the three of them all disappeared on the particular day, which is in this auspicious month of Kartik. That's Gopashtami Maharaj. It's also Gopashtami, right? Yeah. Gopashtami, and there's another date that's not mentioned, it's called Gostastami. Gopashtami and Gostastami, one thing we know about that day, that's the day when Krishna uh, started herding cows. Before then, he was herding calves. So that, that was a celebration day where Krishna graduated to taking care of calves to taking care of cows. So that's very sweet little uh, point on the life of Sri Krishna. He became old enough to take care of cows on that day. Boy, your Jagannath deities are so beautiful. I hope everyone is getting this darshan. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. They look very nicely dressed, too. It looks like they're in their night outfits. Is that true? No, no. They are they are outfit uh, day outfits, Maharaj, and they are from Vrindavan. Oh, very, very nicely ornamented. This year we are missing the Rathayatras because of the pandemic, so they didn't really go out. Otherwise, every year they go out three to four times on a Rathayatra cart. So. Mm -hmm. so now we have to come and see them. Yes, Maharaj. So Thanksgiving parade is the largest parade in Charlotte and fourth largest in US. And for last two years, they went on that Rathayatra. But this year, the parade is canceled because of pandemic. When do you uh, when do you do it? What time of the year? Uh, one is Thanksgiving parade. One is uh, Saint Patrick Day parade, and the third one is uh, Martin Luther King Day. And then uh, during December they go to Hillsboro for Hillsboro Ratha Yatra. Yeah, uh, it's a parade, Maharaj. Yeah, we go in the parade, Maharaj. It's not separate Ratha Yatra, but no, we do don't have to take permission or something and everybody is ready with their cameras all the americans they come and they take picture of lord jagannath so it's so nice mm -hmm. yeah jagannath is the most merciful manifestation because he leaves his comfortable uh, dwelling to give his association <laughs> to the malaches <laughs> He's a deity for the Malaches. There's a beautiful article that was just released describing the background, the, the heritage of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's family members before he appeared. And in that article, which is a very unique article, it's never been written before, it describes that the family was very much connected with the worship of Jagannath. And mostly, it was in the area of Arissa. So it's interesting or quite uh, natural that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had a tremendous attraction for Ch for Jagannath, although he is Jagannath himself, out of all the deities that are manifested as Krishna, Jagannath became 
the focus for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so this article, you can find it for those of you who receive uh, the Kitab, the Krishna Kitab Bindu by Madhavananda. It's a few issues ago where there is two, part one and part two, describing the heritage, culture, and history of the family of Lord Chaitanya. If anybody would like that history, I can just forward it. To Mara, yeah, Maharaj, could you email to me and then I would uh, give it to the group here? Yeah, I'll do that right after we finish here. I'll send it right off. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. It's, it's a fascinating read. It's the most amazing to learn about. You can see the connection between Lord Chaitanya and Jagannath. It's so deep. Of course, you know, he's Krishna, but in the, he was particularly focused on this manifestation of himself, Lord Jagannath. Okay. And there are so many pastimes, uh, there are so many pastimes of Lord Chaitanya in the Jagannath Puri, so those are really wonderful nectarian pastimes, Maharaj. Yeah, there's unlimited so pastimes. Maybe one day we can talk about those pastimes. Maybe one week we can talk about those pastimes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> this is this is our this is the essence of our happiness to hear and chant the glories of Lord Chaitanya, <clears throat> Jagannath, and Krishna and Vrindavan. Uh, Guru Maharaj, may I just ask a very quick question before we end up? You're on. Um, during some lecture, you mentioned that Lord Chaitanya spread the movement in three ways. One was his associate, second was the Avesh, that means like Srinivas Acharya, who are especially empowered. You didn't mention the third one, but I'm just assuming it is Lord Chaitanya himself. Is that correct? It's mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita with uh, Nikula Brahmachari, I think it's yeah, Nikula Brahmachari or Nishringadas, Nishringa Brahmachari, either one. One of them was an Avesh manifestation of, uh, of Lord Chaitanya. Uh, and it mentions here yeah, three ways, directly by empowering someone and by associating with those who had the uh, association of Lord Chaitanya. I think these are the three ways. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Okay. So maybe we can uh, end here. We're at the one hour mark. So thank you to all the devotees and uh, uh, take some time and uh, research more about the life of Srinivas Acharya. It's quite interesting. There is one book, it's called Prema Vivarta. It's not by, it's not by Jagannanda Pandit. It's by a, a person called Nityananda Das. It's a book that may be not so easy to find, but maybe a few decades ago it was circulating, circulating around ISKCON. In that, there's a lot of uh, statements glorifying and describing the activities of Srinivasacharya. Nityananda Das was a, a disciple of Janava Devi, and he wrote this book. And there's glorification of Virbhadra Chandra, Janava Devi, and Srinivas, mostly in this particular narration. 
he is the same author for the mahabharata book also maharaj is that right the big book of mahabharata mahabharata but mahabharat mahabharat yes what's the connection no no the author is the same author and he has written that big book of almost and it is a detail narration of mahabharat lot of details are there which are not available anywhere else who, who wrote it i believe it is the same author nityananda das hmm that book i don't know i'm not familiar with that okay something in yeah, mahabharat Okay. Hi, can, so, I, can I just um, that book, Prema Vivarta? Are there two books by the same name? Because I'm thinking yeah. what the. Oh, yeah. okay. Both of have the same name. <laughs> two different authors and two different books. <laughs> okay. Also, um, I didn't hear the question so well, but it sounded like. um the question was about the three different ways that is it that lord chaitanya appears to his devotees yeah you can find it in the anchalila i'm not sure exactly where but it's in anchalila it describes those three ways uh, direct uh, this is called avesh avesh means empowered by the by lord chaitanya so anyone who meets that person is actually meeting lord chaitanya through this empowered personality through um uh, one is a vaish to to meet lord chaitanya through another personality um i'm also remembering that i think one of the ways is that he can appear to his devotee but nobody else around can see that he is there yeah you got it that's the third reason yeah yeah lord chaitanya appears like that yes to um rag raghunath das isn't it? or or yeah raghunath das or or whenever he shows up to to um to take the prasad that was was it cooked by ragan um ragananda so or somebody like that raghava pandit aha uh-huh. aha uh-huh. and his wife uh, his sister demianti other mm-hmm. mm-hmm. pandit demianti brother and sister used to cook for lord chaitanya and then i think a third way was that he was just like Um, he would appear he would appear wherever lord lord nityananda was dancing uh huh he would appear when sachi mata was cooking okay. yeah it's four ways okay. i can remember those three mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay Hey, thank you very much. And uh thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Now I'll send off this uh, narration to Abhiram Abhiram Saka Prabhu and uh, anybody who wants it, he can distribute it about the history yes, of the life of Lord Chaitanya's ancestry. It's quite nice. I think as I was reading it, I I was thinking now this so interesting too mm-hmm. and there's a lot of Thank things lot. that article you won't find anywhere this is this is this was done by some by great research by madhavananda prabhu who presented this article mm-hmm. okay so i'm going to end here and s- offer my obeisances to all the vaishnavas vanchakalpa to this chat
चंद्रमोली स्वामी महाराज की जाय थैंक यू महाराज फॉर वेरी वेरी वंडरफुल हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू गुरु महाराज कृष्णा थैंक थैंक यू 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 सो 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 मच 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 गुरु 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 महाराज 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा 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 सचिन लेक्चरियन लेक्चर जस्ट फिल्स द हार्ट विद हैप्पीनेस थैंक यू 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 क्लास वेरी वेरी मच मच Thank you very much